Okay, I've got a Synology DS1815 Plus here. Picked this up on eBay. The seller said it does not turn on anymore. It was flaky turning on. So I suspect it's that transistor where it's not bringing the voltage low enough on the power supply switch. So we're going to put a resistor in there and I'm also going to put the resistor in for the atom bug issue and see if we can get these thing going. I fixed one of these a few months ago and it worked great. You can pick them up on eBay for around $200. It's an 8 bay unit. And you know, new, these things are about $1,000 now without hard drives in them. So it gets a little expensive. And I don't need the higher end CPUs with the newer systems. I'm just looking to do some simple RAID on them. So to take it apart, it's pretty straightforward. We'll just take out a bunch of the back screws and then eventually we'll get to the motherboard on the side. These screws are a little smaller for the case, so I'm going to use a smaller Phillips head. Okay, so I think I got all the screws. It's one, two, three, four, five, six screws for the outside metal shell. Just pull it back and then up. I don't recall if the fan has to come out or not. I guess it does, but I honestly don't remember. The atom bug resistor is very easy to solder in. To fix the transistor problem is a little bit more tricky. It's a surface mount transistor, so I'm not going to touch it because it's too small. So I'm just going to solder a resistor over the solder pads. Okay, so to get the fans out, you just disconnect these two connectors once you have the fans, and then you can put this to the side. I'm using a very small screwdriver to help pry the power supply connector off. It's being a little stubborn. So I'm just getting it between the white connector and the black connector. And it's just a difficult... There we go. So we got that out. There's another connector over here that's going to have to be disconnected. You just pull that one out. And I recall having this problem the last time. This back plate's going to have to be loosened up because of the Ethernet connectors and the USB connectors. We can't just pull the board out or slide it up because of these connectors on the back of the board. So there's some screws here on the case. hold this back plane on. I'm going to keep them in a separate screw holder so I don't mix them up. I don't believe you got to take it all the way off from what I recall the last time I did this. There. That kind of gets it loose. And there's a screw on the bottom. We'll also take the center one out. And that makes this fairly sloppy, so you can now 
pull the board out. There's an edge connector on the board here, which is connecting it to the SATA bus. So you have to kind of pull the board to the, towards this way a little bit, and then you can pull the board out. So, okay, interestingly enough, the Atom bug was applied to this. The eBay seller did not mention that, as you can see right here. So I'm not going to have to do that. So most likely it's just the, the transistor that's the issue. And that's over here by the edge connector. I'm sorry for the camera not being able to focus too well. But we're going to solder a resistor there and hopefully that will fire this up. So in order to solder this 1K resistor on these two solder pads, you want to make the spacing five millimeters. As you can see, I've bent the resistor leads here. This way you can solder this directly over those two pads and it's exactly a five millimeter spacing. The next thing I did was I soldered a lead onto the end of the resistor. This will help me hold the resistor in place with a third hand because if you try to grab the resistor with the third hand, it gets in the way and you can't get the soldering iron on the, the two solder pads easily. So this will just help get your third hand out of the way while you solder this down. Okay, so this is how I rigged the third hand to hold the resistor in place with that little solder lead that I put onto the end of the resistor. This way the third hand is out of the way of those two solder pads and will make it a lot easier to solder that resistor on there. Watch out for it. There's an edge connector over here in the bottom left corner and then there's the larger edge connector here. So you got to spring this metal out a bit so you can line up those USB and Ethernet ports. But make sure you look at that edge connector over there. That's the tricky one, getting that lined up. Once that one's lined up, this one goes in real easy. Okay, so I've decided to leave the lid off for right now and the, the back plane is still loose, but just tucked in enough that everything's connected. I just want to do the nail biting to see what happens when we apply power. And look at that. There we go. That's all that is. This would not turn on when I first received it. And a simple resistor turns this guy on. Gotta love it. 200 bucks and I've got an 8-bay Synology NAS. Okay, so I moved the NAS to a location where I've got some uh, network connections and I use the Synology tool to find it and it sees it just fine so it's on the network. I just love how a simple resistor can fix an otherwise dead unit that most people would just throw out. It's really just so nice that we can restore these things and get them working. Uh, but shame on Synology too for not offering any sort of repair services on this. This is such a simple fix it's a design flaw with that transistor and it's just amazing that something that cheap can completely disable this unit and they will not do any sort of board repairs for anybody but anyway um, I hope this helps anybody who's maybe got one that's broken or you can go scout for one on eBay if you've got some soldering skills you can pick up a really nice bargain.